Skycon for me is a very interesting uh, project because it has so many levels and I'm really curious that we have a lot of uh, touch points here with the Skycon launch and uh, different speakers to see all the different aspects. But here for us to give us a broad overview and uh, introduction about um, their project is uh, Cinch. Please take the stage. Big round of applause for Cinch. So uh, about 10 years ago, um, Bitcoin was released, and I was one of the first people who I actually got stuck um, fixing the bugs in Bitcoin. So Bitcoin was released, and there was a small group of people using it, and new people would come in every month, and, old, and people would leave, and they'd get bored. And people were just running this uh, computer program on their computer, and they were getting these free coins. And I think I had installed Bitcoin about three times, and every time I'd forget about it, and then someone would send me a news article saying, hey, have you heard about this? And I'd reinstall it. And I think the third time I looked at my computer, I'm like, hey, wait, I already had this installed, and I installed it like two years ago. What's, what's going on here? And then I'm like, oh, oh yeah, that, that thing. And um, so I played around with Bitcoin, and then eventually I got sucked into fixing bugs because it didn't actually work on uh, Linux, and it didn't compile. So I ended up um, getting sucked into this, and then, um, um, so anyways, at the beginning, um, when uh, Bitcoin was developed, someone, people for about 20 years were trying to uh, decide, uh, trying to figure out how to create uh, digital currencies that were not backed by governments. So there were people and they said that uh, governments are bad. Governments have a central bank and they print out money and we don't know how much money they print out. And the governments are inflation, uh, highly inflationary. They keep printing up more and more money every year. So in every country on earth, basically, the government will print up 10% more money every year. So people said, and, and all the money is centralized and controlled by the a central bank, which controls the interest rate. So at the start, there were libertarians, and they said, this, this was bad, and we should have private money. And so there's an argument about whether money should be uh, private and whether money should be public. And either way, you have, you have, or you should have both, and they should be in competition. But um, there were the libertarians, and they said we wanted to create a, a digital money that didn't have a, a, a government, a, a money backed by mathematics. And so they spent about 20 years trying different methods, and they ended up coming up with uh, with Bitcoin. And um, so Bitcoin was really the first prototype of a of, of a system um, of it's a basically a system of digital law. And uh, normally, when you have, for instance, money in your bank account, you it's owned by an institution like a bank, and the bank can change your balance, or they can charge you a fee, or they can steal your money, and if you give your money to a third party, you don't control it anymore. So what Bitcoin did was it used mathematics instead of human institutions and lawyers, and, and so we were able to start moving rule of law over from, um, from institutions and lawyers and corruptible humans over to uh, mathematics, which is uh, immutable. And so, and then later, so the beginning, the purpose of Bitcoin was to create this, this money that was independent of government. But then later on, people started to look at the technology itself. They started looking at the blockchain. And they said that this could be used to create transparency. And, um, and what the blockchain is essentially, and I don't think people understand what the blockchain is, but it's a database. So what the blockchain enables you to do is, you can, uh, every person runs the node, and the nodes achieve consensus. So every single node will have uh, agreement over, uh, over basic facts. So if I look in my, at my address in my wallet, and it says it has $10, and you run your node, and you check the balance, it'll say $10. And if I have $10 in my account, and I pay this guy ten, uh, $8, and I try to pay the other guy $7, um, we know that, oh, you only have $10 in your account, and you just paid him you know, $8, and you don't have enough money to make this transaction, or you try to pay two different people with the same money, the, the consensus mechanism will detect that. So what the so what blockchain essentially is, is it is a database, and it also, that's the most fundamental thing with blockchain is, but it also is a mechanism of social consensus. So every single person running the node agrees on what the state is. <coughs> Um, of the network, so every person agrees on the balance. So I don't need a bank to say, oh, you have $200 in your account, because every person running this program will say, ah, he has $200, and every person will agree. So this eliminates the need for, uh, for third parties or lawyers or arbitrators to tell people like, uh, oh, this is his money, or that's his money, or he stole that, so he should pay him this. We, we start replacing the human institutions um, and the lawyers and this whole level of uh, all these layers of society we built up to stop corruption 
and to achieve accountability, but we can replace that with mathematics uh, in an open process where everyone can see uh, what the state of the network is and where everyone can achieve consensus. So we're in the first 10 years of blockchain, uh, and for the first 10 years, it was just Bitcoin, basically. Until about two to three years ago, there were no other major coins. Um, and Bitcoin was what I would consider to be a solution in search of a problem. So there was uh, precedents for this before. For instance, when the laser was invented, um, they said, oh, we have this light source, and it's a million times brighter than the sun, and we can generate this extremely intense beam of light, but what do we do with it? And so for 30 years, the scientists had developed a laser, but they had no idea what applications the laser would actually be applied in. And so it took 30 years after the invention or the solution to find what the problem it was solving was. And then today we have lasers and CD-ROM drives, and we have lasers for um, like self-driving cars for finding distances, and we have lasers for cutting metal, and we have lasers for you know for th they're in everything um, now, with laser pointers and so on and so on. But it took 30 years from when the invention was created till when we found the actual application for that. And so blockchain, it's very similar, and I think it's going to be 20 or 30 years um, from the introduction of Bitcoin until we s actually figure out what the, the social application of blockchain is. So I started in the beginning, and so first eight years was just Bitcoin, and th this was very interesting. Um, Bitcoin has a lot of problems and a lot of flaws, and um, Bitcoin right now is just a currency. It doesn't do anything. You check your balance, send. It doesn't really do anything. Then later on, um, <coughs> Platforms started developing to start using blockchain as a database for storing data and for storing uh, information. And, um, and so, anyway, Skycoin um, started actually just after the public introduction of Bitcoin. Um, and we started with trying to figure out um, how to replace the consensus algorithm and how to fix problems with the, the mathematics of the blockchain and to simplify it. So, Bitcoin was the first. Uh, blockchain application, but Bitcoin is not simple, it is not intuitive, it does things that you wouldn't expect, like you have a transaction ID, and what is an ID? It's an identifier. So you'd say, uh, you can have a transaction be introduced into the network, and the transaction can be executed, but if you check whether the, uh, the transaction was executed by the transaction ID, uh, the transaction, you'll, it'll never be executed. It says this, I, this transaction ID has not been executed but the transaction was actually executed, but under a different transaction ID. And what that means is that a transaction ID does not actually identify a transaction. So we say, oh, this is an ID, but it doesn't identify the transaction. So what, what does that mean? So it's like up is down, left is right, uh, everything, everything is sort of screwed up in Bitcoin. It doesn't actually work the way that you would assume. It's sort of dumped it together in ad hoc. So we went in there and we started deleting code and we started with 85,000 lines of code and we deleted everything that was unnecessary until we got down to 10,000 lines of code. And then we started building <coughs> up from there. Um, and then, so we introduced a new consensus algorithm. The idea in um, Bitcoin was that the people who had the most hashing power, the people who run these miners, and the people who ran the miners would produce the blocks and the transactions go into blocks and everyone agrees which, uh, which blocks are the dominant blocks and which, uh, which chain of blocks is the correct one. And, um, and so Bitcoin said, oh, whoever has the most hashing power controls the network. And Satoshi originally envisioned a network of hundreds of thousands of computers distributed all over the world in every single country that would be controlling the Bitcoin network. And what actually happened in reality because of human nature was the whole mining network became monopolized by three companies that are all located in China and basically getting free government electricity. So, so this, this decentralized utopian vision of this global humanities money ended up becoming um, a centralized, uh, becoming centralized by three companies that are just doing it for the money and doing it for profit. And it was very funny because the miner is actually, um, there's only so many transactions that can get into the network. And you have to pay a transaction fee and the transaction fee goes to the miners. So what the miners started doing was they started injecting their own transactions into the network with huge fees like $20, $30, $40 fees so that you're competing against fake fees. And then the miner basically moves his money from the left hand to the right hand. So it's like you're in an auction and the person running the auction is bidding on the items and he's going to, oh, he paid $50 million for the artwork, but he's really taking the $50 million from his left hand and paying his right hand the $50 million and then waiting for some idiot to come and try to outbid him and pay 55 million instead of 50 million. 
So they, the miners figured out various ways of gaming the system, and uh, so so this Bitcoin started out as a uh, utopia. These are actually too bright. Um, the uh, they, so Bitcoin started out as a utopian decentralized vision, and it ended up becoming corrupted by basically greed and human nature, and it became a for-profit uh, operation monopolized by a very small number of com uh, companies. So the Bitcoin got us to this point, and I think Bitcoin will eventually, it'll still go off, I think, for a while, but it'll eventually peter off and die and become irrelevant because Bitcoin has been unable to adapt to some of the, the problems that it's created. So. Right now, um, you need 300 transactions per second for Visa in order to process most of the credit card transactions on Earth. But Bitcoin can only handle six transactions per second. And the other thing is, I can't buy a cup of coffee with Bitcoin because the transactions take 20 minutes or they take an hour, and the transaction fee is five over five dollars, sometimes fifty dollars. So when I started in Bitcoin, I was using it to pay employees overseas because I didn't want to pay fifty dollars to do a bank transfer. And I said, oh, Bitcoin's so cheap. I'm only paying five cents per transaction. This is 100 times cheaper than the banks. Then by the time Bitcoin started to become popular, the transaction fees were getting as high as $50. And the bank was only charging me $20. So I said, why should I use Bitcoin if they're charging me even more than the banks that I started using Bitcoin to get away from in the first place? So th these are the, 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 some of the problems with Bitcoin. And when I do a transaction, I walk into a coffee shop and I uh, buy a coffee. I can do the payment in five seconds with a credit card, with Apple Pay, or with, uh, in, in China, WeChat Pay, or uh, Jifuba, and Alipay. But with Bitcoin, it takes 20 minutes. So for Skypoint, we wanted to fix these problems. We wanted to do as many transactions as we needed to, to basically have a, a, a currency or a prototype that could support basically every human on Earth at the rate of the Visa network. We wanted to have the transactions in under a second, and we wanted to get rid of these miners that were becoming a, a problem. And um, when we started this, the, the miners were saying, oh, that coin has no miners, it's bad, it's, uh, it's pre-mined. And the miners were basically attacking, we're getting free money for mining the coins, and they were basically attacking everyone that um, wasn't giving them free money. So when we started doing this, this was very unpopular, but just in the last year, people are starting to revolt and say this mining thing is stupid. And I think when they understand what our consensus mechanism is for Skycoin, people are going to ask why Bitcoin even exists and why they even do it this way. Because uh, this tends to be the, the, the thing. People resist the new the change. They say, the way we do it now is good, and anyone not doing it this way is bad. And then eventually they get sick of the, the status quo, and then, they say, and then they look at the new thing and they say, well, that old thing is bad. So you go from like democracy, to feudal, or you go from feudalism to democracy. And, or you go from monarchy to democracy, and then people look back and say, ah, ah that old system was um, you know, so much worse, even though it was probably exactly the same thing. But the <laughs> <laughs> and um, we started the new blockchain, then we did the new consensus algorithm, then we started doing uh, CXO, which is methods of storing data, because we're not going to put all the data on a blockchain. It doesn't make sense. Most of the data is going to be off the blockchain. Um, then we have CX, so the CXO is an immutable, um, object format, and this is very interesting because if you're a lawyer or you're a government and you want to have a document and, and prove the document was not modified, you're going to use immutable data. And if you're a content provider and you have uh, 100 million users downloading the same video over and over and over and over again, does it really make sense for people to go, uh, for every single packet to go to the other side of the earth? If I have, I'm downloading something from a web server in California, every time it's requested, you keep sending these packets over to the other side of the earth millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of times. But with immutable data, as one person in your city has a copy of the data, you just ask your neighbor and he gives it to you and it doesn't have to go to the other side of the earth. And even if the subject, and so this new type of data format is basically going to take over the internet. Um, the whole internet, the way it's architected, is gonna be replaced with this because 99% of the content on the internet is people retrieving the same videos, the same cat photos, the same, uh, like video game texture packs, the same file over and over and over and over and over again. So it just makes sense to grab the file from the nearest neighbor and the closest person to you that has it, instead of going to the other side of the earth every time we have to make a, a web request. So um, this is a more efficient and sustainable way of doing networking. Then we developed CX, which is our programming platform. It's our programming language for blockchain, which has just, uh, just started to be released a few months ago. We just had the first person uh, finish uh, the first video game in CX last week, which was Pac-Man. Um, and then we have Skywire, which is uh, the most interesting thing. The Skywire 
is what I would be considered to be the first actual real world application of blockchain. And what we're doing with Skywire is we're, have, we're building a community ISP. So we have people buying uh, network, uh, networking equipment like Wi-Fi routers and they run Skywire on it. And if you provide services to the network, you connect to your neighbor, you, you form a community internet. And if you provide services to that network, you get paid coins. And if you consume the services of the network, um, you pay coins. So this is a closed, the first closed loop economy where people are producing and people are consuming and they're paying each other on blockchain. So Bitcoin is very interesting as a prototype, but it doesn't have an actual economy. There's no production, there's no consumption in Bitcoin. So we wanted to create an ecology. So a lot of uh, people say, oh, we should do community currencies and we should do local currencies, but then no one accepts the currency as payment or um, no one's willing to work for the currency. So you have this, this problem of you have to create an co economy of producers and you have to create an economy of consumers. And then you have to have a commodity that can be bartered. And so this is uh, our attempt to actually build a, an, an actual economy on blockchain. And this is, I don't think, will be necessarily popular in the first world or like US or Japan or even Europe because the, the internet's, you know, it's cheap, it's fast, people don't care, they just pay the, you know, they just pay their bill every month. But in Africa, what we found is that people are spending, in rural Africa and Kenya, they're spending half of their income on cell phone data. So there's people that are starving to death and dying of malaria because they can't afford medication and they can't afford food. They don't have running water and uh, they are spending half of their income on the cell phone data so that they can communicate with their family around WhatsApp and Facebook. So for, the, for rural Africa, this is very, very interesting because the cell phone data and the, the, the cost of communication is such a large percentage of the income of people in that region. So we're looking at finding low cost, uh, sustainable uh, methods of providing telecommunication services to these people using blockchain without the overhead of the traditional um, telecommunication providers. And then we have Fiverr, which is our corporate platform where companies can launch their own blockchain for their individual application. And we created this because we saw that on Ethereum, there were hundreds of thousands of applications, but they were all shoved onto one blockchain. And we said, it doesn't make sense to put all of the world's data on one database. It, it, it just becomes bloated and it becomes too slow. And, um, and then if you put every application on one database, they start fighting each other to get access to the database. So in Ethereum right now, people are paying $5 per transaction. And we've had uh, customers come to us and they want to do a million transactions an hour and no company has $5 million an hour to pay in transaction fees to Ethereum. So they're coming to us and they're asking for uh, their own blockchain. So we're working with publicly traded utility companies and people doing power grids and trying to put water on blockchain and doing sustainability projects and, uh, and basically everyone basically doing blockchain, they're just coming to us and they're asking us, can you give us our own blockchain? And we say, we say yes, and if they own their own blockchain, then they're not paying the transactions to the third party. And there's other people who say, oh, oh EOS will solve this problem. Uh, it won't have the same problem as Ethereum. So in, uh, in Ethereum, you get the storage space on the blockchain for free, and you pay $5 per transaction. In EOS, you get your transactions for free, but you end up paying $5 an hour for the storage space. So, <laughs> so um, yes. and then we're doing social media, like, uh, you know, packets. Um, so Skype one right now, we have about 15, it's, it's getting too big, in the last year we have like 15 offices now. And uh, so at the bottom layer, we have the cryptography, the consensus, the blockchain, the, the mathematics basically, uh, um, the low level. And then in the middle, we have things like the hardware wallet and the usability of how the user interacts with the coin, um, the fiber, the platform, the, the APIs. This is where the developers work. So this is like the plumbing, and this is what the, the developers work with. And then at the top, we have what the user sees. So these are the applications that people use in their lives, like they, you know, the video games on the blockchain that we're prototyping, or the messaging applications, or Skywire, or, um, or the wallet. So there's, th there's, so there's three different levels. At the very bottom level, the math and the, and the infrastructure, then what the developers are using, and then at the top level, the, the applications for the end user. So it just took, it took years to build this up. So one very interesting thing, I, 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 only, I don't have time to go into this, but we have a new consensus algorithm that, uh, and I think when people understand what our, how our consensus algorithm works, they're gonna look back at Bitcoin and say, why did, why did they even do this? Because um, the, so basically right now, the, the companies are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars 
a day in mining costs just to do a few transactions per second. And the cost is ridiculous. And if you're spending almost a billion dollars a year in mining fees, you can only have one or two very large blockchains like Bitcoin or uh, Ethereum. But when consensus becomes cheap, when you can uh, have your own blockchain, have a secure consensus that's immune to being attacked, that doesn't have a 51% attack, um, you can now have millions of blockchains. So what we're seeing now in this, in this third generation of blockchain is we're going from one or two extremely large platforms like Bitcoin and Ethereum to basically every city, every municipality, every household, every person, it may eventually have a blockchain, their own personal blockchain. We're going, uh, if, if you have 20 different government uh, departments doing projects, each one may have one to three blockchains. So we need to make the blockchains cheap. It doesn't, it, but right now the way the blockchains are done, since they cost hundreds of millions of dollars a year to run, there's gonna be only one or two large ones. So by developing a new consensus algorithm, they're reducing the cost of consensus uh, running a blockchain becomes as cheap as running a web server. So we're going at, it's basically going from like the IBM mainframe where only a few companies can afford to have a computer to having a personal computer or having a personal web server where you can have your own website. Whereas before the equipment was very expensive or it was very difficult. And so we're going into an era of personalization of the blockchain where the blockchain will become more accessible to, to more people and will be used more widely. And one of the reasons we haven't seen that yet is because of the cost of the consensus process, which is why we created our new consensus algorithm. And then we created uh, this hardware platform, which is, this is eight cell phone computers, very cheap, uh, four cores per, per computer, two gigabytes of storage, and uh, this is a personal cloud. So if you're a company or an individual, you can go and buy this and put it into your company or put it into your, uh, your house. And you can store your own data on your own computer. So we like Amazon EC2. We like the cloud. We like having these thousands of computers and being able to run apps and web servers on them. But we think that it's we should, the consumer or the company should own the computer, not someone else. You shouldn't be renting it from someone else. And if you have spare storage capacity, you can run that out to other people. So one of the, the three things for computing is storage, computation, and bandwidth. So we're letting people rent storage space. We're letting them rent bandwidth. We're rent, letting them rent um, computation. So those are the three primitives um, for, uh, for computer science. And that is what we are. And so we built it. Anyways. Um, so this is for Skywire. Eventually, there's two motors in it. This is an antenna. There's two motors in this uh, for steering the antenna. And eventually, this was going to be done in about a month. And people are going to go buy this and just stick it on the roof. And they'll be able to connect uh, between two nodes over up to 15 kilometers. So people will be able to buy the network infrastructure, just plug it in, put it on the roof, and they will it'll autonomously configure into a community internet. And so this is, um, and then if they forward traffic for people, they will be paid coins. And if they consume traffic, uh, they'll pay coins into the network. So this is one of the most, this is the thing that I'm most excited about for Skycoin right now that we're releasing in the next two months. And then we're also working on things like usability. So we, uh, Bitcoin's very hard to use, very difficult to use. There's no default mobile wallet. There's a bunch of third party mobile wallets now, but so we created a mobile wallet that's very, very good. We created a um, web desktop wallet that's very easy to use, much easier than Bitcoin. And we've also created uh, a hardware wallet. So right now the Bitcoin wallets currently cost $100, $200, $300. This is a $10 hardware wallet. So eventually if you're gonna walk into a coffee shop and have like $800 of coins on you and you wanna buy a coffee or you wanna do some small spending or you wanna shop and you wanna use a coin like a credit card, we have to get the cost of the wallet down to $10 or, uh, $10 or $5. If we wanna get wallets out to 100 million people or a billion people or we wanna every person have five or six wallets that can store coins and be able to spend them, we need to get the cost down. So this is uh, very this is very interesting. This. Uh, this is just, we have uh, copies of this, the first prototypes here, but this was just finished last week. And then this is the mobile wallet, and this was another thing that we, we released is like uh, just the last month. Is the, we find out, this was supposed to be eight months ago, but <laughs> the software is always uh, smaller than we want it to be. So we, uh, another thing about Bitcoin is the usability, like people, 
lost most of the Bitcoin. So I remember people who had 100,000 Bitcoin, 10,000 Bitcoin, and they would format their hard drive every year, or they'd uh, get a new computer and throw out their old computer. And most of the Bitcoin is actually just lost. No one even knows where it is. They just like threw it out or deleted it, and it's just gone. So we had to, when we're doing the usability, we have like a seed, and you can write down your seed on a piece of paper and put it in a safe, and as long as you know the seed, you're not gonna lose your money, you can always get it back. Even if you don't, if you, even if you don't have a computer, you write down your seed on a piece of paper and throw your computer in a river, and you go in another country, buy a new laptop, and sell software and put it in the seed, your money will still be there. So we, we created a way to actually put the coins on paper so that you can write the coins down on a piece of paper so that you don't even need a computer to store and transport the coins because people just kept losing them. So that, like, it, it's pretty ridiculous, actually. And um, anyways, that's it. <laughs>